All right, so what we're doing is we are looking at calculating work input, work output, mechanical advantage, and efficiency. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. All right, and, and you're going to see we're going to do some of the problems. You need an extra sheet of paper because this sheet does not have enough. All right, and so you're going to need an extra sheet of paper here. Yes. All right. All right. So starting off, we're going to do this worksheet. I'm zooming in so you can see it. We're going to start on number one on this side. All right. On number one for this side, it says for problems one through two, it's using this description here. A man uh, who puts a 50 Newton force on a hammer over a distance 0.5 meters, while the hammer puts a force of 900 Newtons over 0 0.15 Newton meters. What is the work input? All right, so we're trying to find what in number one? Wait, what's the table of contents? Work input, not right now. Work input. All right, so that's what we're looking for. What is the formula for work? What is the formula for work? Let me call in somebody. We call, talked about it recently. Formula for work is uh, right here. Force times distance. So work equals force times distance. So anywhere there's a force over a certain distance, I have what done? If I have a force over a certain distance, I have work done. All right. All right. Yes. So I, I thought you're seeing it, but you're not. Let me do that. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you. All right. So we're looking at, again on a sheet of paper. You're writing work input equals force times distance. This is going on notebook. Yes, this will be going on notebook. And I'll tell you the page number in just a little bit. All right. Uh, the um, and this will go on entry six. I'm just going to say that. All right. Um, what is the work input? It's when the formula is going to be work equals force times distance, and it's going to be work input times force input times distance input. All right. Normally we write down what are we looking for? What do we know? All right. So what do we know in this problem? Yes. All right, is that the machine's force or is that the man's force? All right, so is that the force input or output? Uh, input. input. Force input is done on the machine. It's done on the machine, usually by the person. All right, what is the, uh, what else do we know? Hmm? 0.5 meters. All right, so that is the distance input. All right, so I have those right here. If I plug in those into this formula, I can get my answer for my work input. Work input equals force input times distance input, and I'm going to plug in 50 Newtons times 0.5. When I multiply those two, I get 25 joules. So work input equals to... 25 joules. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to calculate work. Number two, it says calculate the work output. All right, who does the work output? Machine. So on number two, that was number one. All right, you're going to calculate the work output. All right, I'm going to come around in about one minute to see what you get. And again, use this description right here to find your answer here. I'm gonna come around in about one minute. <clears throat> Let me pause the video for a second. All right. Um, so yeah, so what do we know in this problem or work output here? Well, we know the work input is uh, 25 Newton. 25 got, joules, that's mm, correct. 25 joules, I mean. All right, we do know that. And what are some things that it told us in the problem for number two? It told us that uh, uh, the force is 50 Newtons. Is that the 
who does that force? Is that the man's force or is that machine's force? The man's force. So right, Fi equals 50 newtons. Okay. All right, perfect. All right, what else do we know? Uh, we know that uh, force on the hammer over at this is a uh, uh, zero point five meters. So, and who does their force zero point five meters? Is that the machine or is that the man's? That's the machine. All right, he says he does a force of fifty newtons over a distance. So it's not uh, the machine; okay, it's actually the man. So the di, which okay. is distance input, is point five meters. Okay. And it's M, so a little M. All right, what else do we know? Um, we know the hammer puts the force of 900 newtons over distance of 0 0.15. All right, so if the hammer does the force of 900 newtons, that is, who does, so what is that called? The force input or the force output? Force output. So right, force output equals 900 newtons. Maybe you'll scoot the sheet up a teeny bit. There you go. All right, and what else do we know? Um, it does a distance of zero point fifteen. All right, and so who does that distance? Is that the man doing his force that distance, or is that the machine doing his force? Uh, the machine. The machine. So that's the distance input or output. Distance um, output. It's output yeah. because the output is always done by the machine. Machine. The distance output is I. All right, and it'll scoot it over a little bit to the left. Other way, so there you go. All right, what's the formula for work output? Uh, WI equals F uh, force times distance. Yeah, and, and work is equal to force output times distance output. So mm -hmm. WO equals? WO equals. Uh, oh. Equals to? Distance output. Uh -huh. okay. uh, distance input. You just put input. DI uh -huh. is distance output. So do DA, you go. So distance output times. Times uh, F uh, force output. Uh -huh. All right. So what is my force output? Uh, your force output is 900 newtons. And what is my distance output? 0 0.15 meters. So plug those numbers below, right? WO equals to what those are right there. Okay. All right, scroll up a little bit. All right, so what is cut? Use the calculator, grab, uh, there you go, and multiply that. Oh, seven. What is it? 27. No, 0 0.15 times 900. Do it again. So 0 0.015 times 900. Did it say 27 over what? Over 2? Mm -hmm. Okay, 27 over 2 is correct. 27 over 2 is uh is when you divide 27 over 2 it's 13.5 that's not in, that's in fraction form mm, yeah all right so 13.5 or 27 over 2. Mm, yeah. and it's 13.5 what what is work measured in maybe on joules joules yes all right and so that's how we do that right here all right very good uh very good all right, and one note, uh, when I write mine, I kind of like, when I write FI, I write it kind of as a subscript, kind of like that. I write, that's 50 Newtons, and I write DI with a subscript. That means, because it looks like they're two separate variables, and I don't want it to look like that. He knows what he's doing, so I, I don't care, but I'm just giving you why I do the things we do here. And this would be, instead of writing W-O like that, I'd write W-O equals to 
BO times FO. All right. All right. What we're going to do next is we're doing, uh, we're going to add a problem here. We're adding a problem. All right. It's going to be number nine. So we're going to add this problem. Okay. So number nine is going to say, what is the, you yes, you have to write this problem here. What is the efficiency of the hammer? What is the efficiency of the hammer in problem in problems one and two? Come on up. All right, and so the formula for efficiency is, and again, just to give you a heads up, efficiency equals, efficiency equals work output divided by work input times 100. Percent. 100%, that's exactly right. You're but thinking that. Like yeah, but we just do it times 100 to equal, because efficiency is a percent number. And so we just say actually just a hundred. That's why, because otherwise it would be just times one. You're right. So that's why I do that like that. All right. Um, so let's go back to our problem and let's plug in our numbers here. All right. And so in number one, our work input was 25 and our work output at number two was, all right. So all I do is I'm going to plug that in 13.5 divided by 25 times 100. All right, when I do that, I get not 1.85. You got to do the small number divided by the big number. It's the, big, it's the bottom number divided into the top number. All right, 0 0.54 times 100, which equals to 54%. That means this machine only converts 54% of the energy into uh, useful energy, the work output, all right? So a lot of the energy is lost, all right? A lot of the energy is lost, maybe to heat, especially here, all right? That's how we calculate efficiency. What we're going to do next is we're going to flip over here and you're going to do another set of two problems here. And we're going to do it on this side, right here. And instead of the word machine here, I'm going to change that first machine to man to make it a little bit more simple for you so you can understand which one. It says a man applies a force of 100 newtons over a distance of 10 meters to raise a 500 Newton drum, 1.5 meters, all right? And so you're gonna do this problem. It says you're gonna do A, what is the work input? And you're gonna do C, what is the work output, all right? And so you're gonna do those two problems. Again, change the first word machine because there's two machines kind of here. And I just wanna make it a little simpler. All right, I'm gonna come around and about the machine could another machine could give your um your your input force, but we're not gonna get into that right yet. All right, I'm gonna give you one minute here to do that. All right, so work input. Uh work input is what we're looking for here. What things do we know? Um it says, uh, the thing is, the man's force is how much? 100, because it says a man applies the force of 100 newtons. So that's the FI or the FO? The FI, all right? And so that's 100 newtons. Uh, what was the, and he, again, what else do we know? The distance. How long did the man do his force? 10 meters, all right? Uh, the machine did a force of how much? And again, if you're helping me, I'm going to try to help you later here. What did the machine do, Caleb? 500 newtons. All right. And, and staying with you, Caleb, what else do we know about the machine? Uh, the distance was 
And so is that the distance input or output? Yes, the distance output is 1.5 meters. All right, and so the formula for work input is going to equal what? Yeah, but work input equals? Fi, yep, F1 or Fi times yeah. Di. All right, and when I do that, I get 100 times 10 equals 1,000 joules. All right, in the second part in C, what is the work output? And what's the formula for work output? Help us write the formula, Cam. Yes. All right. So let's plug in our numbers. Um, what's the numbers we're going to plug in? Yes. All right. So 750 joules. And so when I get that, that's my answer here. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do D. All right. I'm going to come around in one minute and see if you get D. The D is the efficiency. And you say, well, what was efficiency? Remember back at this problem where we had, we did one earlier. This was efficiency. Efficiency equals work output divided by work input times 100. We've already calculated work output and we've calculated work input. So now calculate the efficiency. I'm going to come around in one minute to see if you get it. I'm going to call on one in just a minute here. Um, I'm going to have uh, um, Jalen, would you help me walk through the, me through this problem here? Jaslyn, not Jalen, Jaslyn. All right, Jaslyn, it says, what is the efficiency of this machine? So what are we looking for? Mm -hmm. So we're looking for efficiency with a question mark. This is number four. All right, now uh, what is our formula for efficiency? That's not the formula. And back, here's the formula again. It is work output divided by work input. So that makes a big deal here. So efficiency equals to work output divided by work input times 100, all right? So starting off, what is my work uh, output going back over here? What was my work output? 750. 750. All right, what was my work input? 1,000 joules. All right, and when I divide those, what is 750 divided by 1,000? Mm-hmm. 0.75 and times 100 is going to equal. So it's 75% efficient. All right, so this machine was 75% efficient. Now, an interesting thing is that cars are only 20% efficient. That means only 20% of the energy in gasoline, in gasoline, most cars, the average car is about 20% energy and gasoline is turned into making the wheels turn. That means 80% of the energy is lost as heat. That's why it's really important to find out technology to figure out how we can conserve that energy and get it converted. Because if you've ever used, when you use a gasoline engine, uh, uh, when you use that, uh, it's you can know there's a lot of heat. In fact, there's so much heat, they have to have coolant on it, okay? So it won't get too hot. So it wastes a lot of energy to become heat. And so in one way that uh, we are using that energy nowadays to help make energy is that when you have, some cars are hybrids. And when they, when you hit the brake, that brake uh, causes something that causes a electric motor to spin in, uh, or a generator to spin and produces electricity and makes a, the electric motor get charged up. So when you brake, it causes a generator to spin and it causes your electric motor to power up. And then you can use your gas motor and your electric motor together 
to power your car. All right. That's how some of the cars are using that. And so it's trying to convert it, save some of that gas energy here. Uh, and bigger cars require more gas. And so especially SUVs are one of those things that do those hybrids a lot. All right. When you hit the brake, the uh, again, it causes the electric generator. In fact, we're about to teach about generators. We're going into electricity in the next chapter here. All right. And so that's what we're about to teach on. And we're going to talk about how generators work. OK. And how do they make electricity? All right, one last thing we need to do is, um, is we need to do this one problem on mechanical advantage. And so you need to write what mechanical advantage is. All right, mechanical advantage. All right, mechanical advantage is the number of times a machine multiplies the input force. All right, so mechanical advantage is the number of times a machine multiplies the uh, Input force. And the formula for mechanical advantage is MA equals to FO, the machine's force, divided by the input force. All right. And so... Um, so FO, we're going to do, let's do the first problem with mechanical advantage. It says in B, what is the mechanical advantage of the machine? All right. Well, mechanic, what are we looking for in B? Mechanical advantage. All right. What do we know? Um, we need to know the force output. How much is the machine's force in number one? That's a 100 newtons is not the machine's force. That is the... The man's force. Remember, we changed that to the man here. And so that's the FI or the FO? FI. The one done on the machine, usually the human, is the FI. All right, what is the machine's force? 500 newtons. All right, and that's called the FI or the FO? FO. All right, so mechanical advantage is going to equal MA equals to 500 newtons divided by 100 newtons and when i divide 500 divided by 100 i get five so this hammer or this machine is not a hammer it multiplies your force how many times five, five times all right all right what i want you to do is i want you to do the mechanical advantage for b on the bottom here all right, I want you to do the mechanical advantage for B. I'm going to come around in about one minute to see if you get the mechanical advantage on B. All right, so Jack, if you'll come on down and we'll walk you through it, how to do it. All right. All right. Would you read the problem now? It's, uh, I think it's letter C. I want to say it was one of the two paragraphs. Uh, what do you think? What one? I think it's letter C or B on number two. What is the mechanical advantage? All right. So, what are we looking for? The mechanical advantage. All right. And may with the question mark. All right, uh, let's read the very top part of the, above it, to above it, where it tells you what the machine tells you about the machine. A 10,000 Newton car is raised a distance of five meters by an effort force of 5,000 Newtons. Okay, uh, and it's, I added something on there, over? Over 170 meters. Okay, um, and so, and when we did that right here, um, uh, what you might call it? Um, sorry, brain dead for a second. 
Uh, so uh, an effort force is also another name for uh, the force that you did. Okay, so the effort force is also another name for what you did. So what do we know in this problem? Um, 500 newtons is something. All right, is that the FI or is that the FO? Force input. Yes, so 500 newtons is the force input. All right, and uh, what's your, what's the force of the machine? 10,000. Mm -hmm. It is. All right, and back, let's, what, what's the formula? What's the formula for mechanical advantage? Uh, All right, and so the machine force, which is the FO, is 10,000. The person's force, which is 500, is the FI. And so 10,000 divided by 500 is equal to... Hold on. Let's see. Twenty. Twenty. All right, and so this thing, this machine multiplies your force how many times? 20 times. So there you go. All right, so this multiply. that's what mechanical advantage is. It just tells you how many times it multiplies your input force. All right, what we're doing next, you're going to do the rest of the problems for your homework. Homework, again, so let me review which problems those are. All right. Um, the all the problems down here a we've already done b c d and e all right you'll do five through eight here and i skipped one by i, I skipped three and four here so you need to do three and four on this one here okay so three and four here so that's a total of three four uh, it's nine we've done all these there's nine on here and these have Five parts and four parts. So about 18 total problems. We've already done about half of them. Okay. We've done about half of them already. So do the other half. Uh, what we're doing next is you're getting this sheet out that we did on. We did on uh, Monday. You're getting this sheet out we did on Monday right here. It looks like that. that sheet? Yes. All right. Also, uh, can I use the bathroom pads? Yeah, in just a moment. Hold on. All right. All right. The thing that we were trying to do on this the other day, one thing that we drew was the lug nut wrench. Okay. Using the lug nut wrench. All right. And now what we need to do is we need to draw the FI, the FO, the DI, and the DO. Okay. And you're going to do that for this simple machine. All right. So draw that on there, all right? And label, you should have already drawn the lug nut wrench already there. I'm gonna give you one minute to draw where the FI, the FO, the DI, and the DO is. You can see how I did the last one. The FO was on the last one. The FO was pushing up on the car. The FI was where he was cranking the jack. The DI was his circular motion of how he was doing that motion. And the distance it lifts the car up is the DO. All right. And so that's what you're doing right here. You're going to do that for one minute.
All right. And so I'm going to come around and check to see what you got real quick. Where's the FI, the FO, the DI? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's but I can't find it. My friend is like, that's fine. But I believe the R is the FI. I got one in two minutes here. You see your FI, FO, DI, DO. All right. All right. It's a little not matching the, the uh, and the, the scale does not match. All right. All right. Here is, um, if you need a sheet, I have some sheets right here. Come on, I have a sheet here. All right, this is the FI. All right, I'm going to draw it with a different marker so he can have it. This is the FI right at the handle. All right, that's the FI. He's pushing down right there. All right. The Where does the machine do its force? On the lug nut right here. So the lug nut is the FO. All right, I'm gonna zoom it in so you can see it even better. So on the lug nut. All right. Um, how far, where does he do his distance on his uh the distance he does his force? He pushes down or pulls up, whichever. I'm gonna say he pushes down. I'm gonna say from here to here, he's gonna push down that far. And that's gonna be the distance input and when he does that it's only going to turn the it's going to turn the lug nut only a small amount that's the do all right so he's going to do a bigger force or he's going to do a small over he's going to do a force here and then he's going to be going to do a bigger distance and it's going to do a bigger force but a smaller distance all right, and so how does this machine make work easier? That's the question. What It does one of these three things. Which one of these three things does this machine do? Does it multiply the input force? Does it increase the distance the force acts over? Or does it change the direction of the force? Which one does it do? Uh, you're going to do a better distance, but I don't, I'm not doing that for the reason. The reason I use a lug nut wrench is so I can get a, why do I use a lug nut? Not to get a bigger distance. A stronger force. So I use it to multiply my input force. So how does it make work easier? It multiplies my input force. All right. Describe the input force and distance and describe the output force and distance. Which one's bigger, the output force or the input force? All right, I do a smaller force. The machine, the FO, does a bigger force. So FO, the machine's force, is greater than the FI. That's why I use it. Who does a longer distance? Who pushes on it for uh, does a longer distance for their force? Yeah. All right, the the person. So that's the distance. Which one? The distance input is greater than the distance output. All right, and so that's what we're seeing right here. That's what we wanted to emphasize with that here. Multiplies my input force. We're going to do one more together, and then you're going to do the next ones, all the rest by yourself. All right. Here's the last one we're doing together. It is a broom. A broom. A broom is another type of lever. All right. So when somebody uses a broom, all right, when somebody uses a broom, all right, if I reach over here, who does a longer, again, if you look over here, 
I put my force right here. I'm doing my force over a distance of this far. The machine does a distance over a longer distance. Okay, the machine, the simple machine does a longer distance. All right, all right. So you're gonna draw the FI, the FO, and the DI and the DO. So do that right now. I'm gonna come around and do it for a minute. Draw a person using the broom and then label FI, FO, and DI and DO. Mm -hmm. Oh, see the last one? I need you to do the one that we're doing right now. Do the broom first. I did it. You already did it? Okay. All right. Let me see what you got for your drawing here. Okay. Okay. All right. Draw all again with the FI and FI. I don't want masterpieces. I want it all done in one minute. That's what I want. So I want quick. Where's your, where's your sheet? Right here. You can on that. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Okay. Okay, yes, that's exactly what I want to see. That's exactly what I want to see. All right. Okay. All right. The purpose of a broom is to help you do a longer distance than you can normally do just yourself with your hands and stuff. It reaches a farther distance. And so you're drawing this, and you should have a thing here let me grab my thing here large that's awesome all right so we are drawing our person using our broom all right so right at the handle is the what that is the force input so right here is the force input. And they pull a distance back and forth, maybe a distance of right about this far. That's the distance input. The machine does its force where? At the bottom. This is the force. All right. But it does a which type of distance? A longer distance. All right. That is the reason why we use it again. When I, it's almost like an oar a paddle on a on a on a uh, a boat. When I do a paddle on a boat, it does the the force over a long distance, whereas I only do my force over a shorter distance. So the purpose. What's the reason why this? What's the reason? How does this simple machine make work easier? Which one of these? It's one of these three here. It increases the distance of the force all right and so that's the benefit here it increases it increases the distance of the force it increases the distance the force acts over it increases the distance the force acts over All right, which one is a bigger force, the FI or the FO? No. The FI is actually bigger. Your force at the top is a bigger force than the force at the bristles. All right, the FI is bigger than the FO. Which one's a bigger distance, the DI or the DO? That's why we use it. DO is greater than the DI. 
All right. And so you kind of see simple machines make work easier by different ways. All right. Now, let me show you. You're going to get a partner. We're in groups of two. And I'm going to give you a simple machine. So get a partner. Give you 10 seconds. Nine. And this is what we're doing all day tomorrow. Okay, we're not, it's the only thing we're doing tomorrow is that I check your homework. I'm just going to check to see what you have. That's all I'm doing here. All right. Yes. Let me give you a pass. Two for nine weeks. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me wait, right? Shut this down real quick. <laughs> 